Okay, yes, I'm going to come in. Very good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. So for today, uh, I'm going to start with the first topic. Okay, let me share with you my slide presentation here. Okay, so the first topic is about uh, the portfolio management process. Um, so obviously, uh, before we move on to the very specific uh, steps when we talk about portfolio, we will step one, you know, at the point we go one step back, whereby we re revisit, okay, we revisit, revisit the concept of what is investment, okay, and the types of investment that uh, we as investors can invest in. And obviously the type of investors before we move on to the portfolio management because portfolio is basically the process of uh, setting up uh, the, the types of stocks that you are the type of investment that you want to invest by the way can you hear me that okay yes, yes. okay good. right so first of all what is an investment so this is the definition of investment uh, whereby uh, you set aside okay, you set aside a current commitment of dollars in our case in ringgit I, we have a current commitment uh, and we set aside that commitment for a period of time okay, period of time so the period of time usually we call them as investment investment time horizon okay so the time horizon it indicates how long we have uh, time for our investment so meaning katakan you have a certain amount of money excess okay idle okay but you don't have that money idle for forever mungkin you are there for maybe six months Okay, katakanlah you have access 10,000 tapi 10,000 ni I tak pakai for 6 months only. So 6 months will be your time horizon, investment time horizon. Okay. Sama juga lah uh, for companies. Okay. Uh, they have access now because they have a, you know, huge profit. And they don't spend anything until let's say another 6 months ataupun another 9 months baru dia nak akan, dia akan invest in another project for example. So that time frame yang from now until the ninth month though. That's your time horizon. So when we talk about investment, it's all about the amount of money that you ready to commit for investment. And on top of that, we have a specific time frame. Okay. And obviously, the main reason why we set aside a certain amount of money and also we invest for a certain period of time in order to get more in the future. Okay? To get more in the future. So therefore, alternatively, slide up under this definition. Okay. Uh, you can add on. Right, your definition of investment as as such, eh? Uh, letak dia macam, uh, is it a sacrifice? Eh? Sacrifice of current commitment on current consumption. Okay, let's say again, I beg you example, if you have 10,000 ringgit, okay, what can you do with 10,000 ringgit? can do a lot of things you can spend you believe you know go shopping go travel okay by using that money 10,000 ringgit okay but instead of you spend you have to sacrifice okay you will not spend you that 10,000 to instead of you spend you keep it ataupun you invest it okay that's why kita panggil dia a sacrifice of current consumption okay or uh Sacrifice for current consumption. Sorry, not for uh, with expectation of higher consumption in the future. Okay. So this is the alternative definition. You can believe the letak as definition. Okay, a sacrifice of current consumption, as I said, 
you have a certain amount of money, instead of you spend it, you hold your temptation, okay? Instead of spend, you invest it. Can be a lot of, ataupun many types of investment available, again. So you just put somewhere with expectation to get more, okay, in the future, which is by consumption, like you invest 10,000 today. So you hope that you can get maybe 11, 12,000 in one year's time, Joto. Okay, so you have more in the future. So that's the definition of investment. Okay, however, obviously when we talk about investment, you have to uh, put into consideration certain elements that may affect your, your, your investment. Lah. For example, here, uh, the, the rate of inflation. Okay, inflation will always play a role ataupun will impact our investment because when the inflation goes up, for example, so obviously the amount that we will receive in the future, hopefully, will be more. The rate of return right, will be more the, than the inflation rate or else it will be considered inefficient. Okay, as simple as this. Kalau inflation naik by 2%, 2%, eh, so we are hoping that our returns of investment to be more than 2%. Kalau lah exactly 2% as the same as the rate of inflation. So basically next year, our, our, our consumption too will be the same as now. Because the return sama banyak dengan inflation rates. So therefore, okay, we should, we should hoping for higher returns than the inflation rates. Okay, in order to feel your returns. Okay, so why people invest, invest atau in our, in our case, you know, either people ataupun uh, individuals or companies invest uh, basically because of this uh, to to have this trade off eh? trade trade off for the present consumption for a larger future consumption. Okay, it's all about profit. So this is the main reason uh, profit. People invest to get profit. The other one invest just for the sake of the capital to be remain intact. Okay. Jarang sangat lah. Most of the time, people will invest with the expectations to get more. Right. And obviously, when we invest to get more, we have a certain objectives in our mind why we want to, to get that amount of money. Okay. So but everyone will have obviously different objectives. Okay. Either short term, medium, or long term. So our investment have to tally, okay, have to match uh with the purpose ataupun with the objectives of our investment okay or else nanti yeah are the mismatch between our what we expect and what we will attain at the end of the day okay so that's number one what is investment and who are these investors okay so we can categorize them into two uh the individual the individuals okay Okay, I record. Okay. Anyway, so the individual. So the individuals need inclusive everyone, meaning your, uh, all of you, myself, our friends and families, all are considered under individual investors. Okay. And for us, okay, most of the time we will invest in this kind of uh, investment in stocks, bonds. Okay, commodities, commodities inclusive of uh, commodities like uh, palm oil, maybe rubber. Okay, these are commodities. Uh, prop real estate inclusive of prop. Okay, but in general, okay, in general, we can categorize the type of investment into two. Type, eh? type of investment you can categorize into two number one uh, financial eh, financial financial assets okay these financial assets can be found in the financial markets inclusive uh, financial institutions as well okay meaning in banks in the money market, capital market. So all of the instruments are considered under financial assets. So this financial assets selalunya considered as intangible. Eh? We cannot see the property, 
per se tetapi is basically a claim okay a claim ataupun certificates Alright, so financial assets selanjutnya will be represented by certificate. Ini bukanlah contoh, eh, tapi just a piece of paper whereby dia akan state your claims to that particular company. Okay, what kind of claims? Selanjutnya bila kita beli certain certificate, uh, sorry, certain securities, dia akan specify lah. What is the amount? Berapa ringgit? Uh, how much is the return? Okay, and how long it will last? Okay, until maturity. So everything will be specified on a piece of paper. And that is considered under financial assets. So, kalau kat bawah ni, you can see like this lah. This is financial assets. This is financial assets. Okay. And on top of that, besides financial assets, okay, for the second type of investment, people can invest in number two, real assets. Okay, real assets. So, real assets, unlike uh, financial assets, It's more tangible, you can see, you can feel. Kalau macam tadi, just a piece of paper memang boleh feel and boleh see kan. Tapi, the value you cannot, takkan nak measure by satu certificate ni je kan. The certificate itself has no value. Okay, tapi dia punya claims yang dalam ni yang values. Tapi for real assets, the asset itself is valuable. Okay, contoh real assets. Macam tadi lah, real estates. Real estate is a real assets. Example of real assets. So, properties. Okay, can be residential properties, business, business ataupun office. Okay, itu semua under real assets. Gold, contohnya. Gold bar tu kan ni, kalau invest in gold bar. So, gold tu is real assets. You can you can see, you can feel the gold. Okay. Uh, antiques. Okay, barang-barang antik yang valuable eh. Bukan barang antik yang dah rosak eh. Barang antiques yang rare and maybe people yang ada expertise like to have those in their collections maybe akan menyebabkan harga dia jadi mahal that is real assets paintings okay nowadays in the modern world painting sebenarnya is uh, niche market lah ada uh, certain uh, certain type of people certain type of investors like to collect paintings bukan sebab dia cantik because it's investment they can resell it at a higher price in the future okay especially kalau the painter so yang memang very well known kan. Eh? So, ya, yeah, people ataupun painting markets is niche. Niche tu aku yang pasal balik. Very few people je yang minat. And because of that, sometimes uh, only that circle je lah yang akan interested with that particular uh, investment. Okay, so, ya, yeah, as individuals, we can touch in the financial assets ataupun the real assets. No issues. Anyway, uh, that's the first investor, the first type of investor. Yang tadi ni types of investment, eh, investment. Now we re reverse back to the investor. So the second category, the second type of investor, would be the the companies that put the non individuals. Okay, the non individuals. Here they specify as corporations or government. Okay, but sometimes, uh, kita letak ni sebagai in institutional institutional investor so the root word is institute corporations okay so for this type of uh, companies institutional investor okay dia bukan tak invest eh. most of them still invest in this okay dia akan invest in stocks obviously bonds commodities uh, money market instruments okay but they also will invest in okay yang individual tak invest which is in the form of plants factories for example uh, machineries and equipment and these all of these are mostly melibatkan operations of the business okay melibatkan operations of the business so as a company the focus may be more diverse Okay, it's not only about the financial assets here ataupun the real assets. On top of that, they will invest uh, for their operations. Okay, so they have more things to to invest in lah. Okay, and if you remember in financial management, 
when we talk about plant equipment machineries okay we have one topic last time uh, related to capital budgeting okay if you still remember lah for capital budgeting is a tool used by companies to make decisions whether to invest either of this okay not purchase new assets or to purchase new equipment ke, to invest in the new projects ke, okay so that their investment will be profitable enough before they are decides whether to to invest or not okay so yeah these are the investors so you just need to remember lah, we have two types eh? individuals and the non-individuals which is the institutional investor Okay, so what do investors look for in their investment? Okay, the most obvious, they not return. Obviously, they can go for returns. So what kind of return? Like the next question. Okay, so here we want to see the types of returns. Okay, the types of returns. Okay, this applicable both for individuals and also for institutional investor. Okay, sama je, the punya expectations. Okay, number one, uh, price appreciation. It's not only about stock. Like in, in fact, in any types of uh, investment, they want to have price appreciation. So what does it mean by price appreciation? The increment in terms of the value of investment. Okay, I'll give you a simple example. Okay, katakanlah I invest in stocks and I purchase 100,000 units. Okay, 100,000 units of stock, okay, one company, and I purchase it with the value of one ringgit. Okay, one ringgit per unit. Eh? Per unit. So if I have one ringgit per unit, so if I purchase it, at the point I purchase 100,000 units at one ringgit, so the value of my investment currently is hundred thousand ringgit that's my value of investment so when i said uh, i my expectation is to have a price appreciation i expect this one ringgit will increase in the future okay let's say after two months it is is now and after two months okay i still have hundred thousand units Okay, but my stocks now have increased to one ringgit and fifty cent per unit. So they're at fifty cent. So what happened to my stocks? The value of my investment. Okay, so kalau tadi one ringgit each, so I have hundred thousand values. But after two months, when they increase to one ringgit fifty cent, they're at fifty cent. Yeah, but since I have hundred thousand units, so I will have the value of investment at Hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, correct. So hundred fifty thousand. So how much in increment in terms of the value? Okay, fifty thousand. I have fifty thousand ringgit uh, more in terms of my worth of investment. Okay, this is what we said as price appreciation. Positive. Eh? Okay, positive. Eh? Maknanya positif. Kalau tiba after two months jadi eighty cents, then obviously I can another eighty thousand. Yeah, so I lost that. Okay, but again, when we talk about investment, nothing is guaranteed. Um, yeah, sometimes it may go according to your expectation, but sometimes it may go against your expectation. Okay, so that's the risk that you have to take. Lah. So, no such thing as no risk. Okay, must have some, some element of risk involved. Okay, um, but even though there will be some type of investment, yeah, maybe the investment oh, sorry yeah the risk is might be not that high but usually when we talk about less risk usually the return is is quite low as well okay but when we talk about stocks ni, memang stock will be placed at a higher types of risk okay so when you get to invest in stock market obviously you are exposed to the highest possible risk okay so but okay with a small change of unit price ni, the value of your investment may go up or down overnight. Dalam masa satu hari pun, you boleh rugi thousands. And at the same time, you can get profits in thousands as well. 
Okay, so that's price appreciation. Okay, you don't have uh, anything else. Tak ada return from profit ke tak. Memang just purely based on price appreciation. Sama jugalah kalau macam you invest in properties. You purchase a house katakan, residential property. Masa dia launch, uh, harga dia 500,000 ringgit. Okay, but for properties, you don't expect it overnight lah. You have to wait for a few years. Maybe that area that develop, the demand for that area increase, for example, because of whatever reason, uh, surrounding punya developments, tiba-tiba ada naik LRT kat situ ke, ataupun dah ada shopping mall tiba-tiba. Kalau tiba-tiba overnight, again, depending on the development. After a few years, okay, that place jadi, you know, tumpuan for people to invest. So, obviously, when you purchase it at 500,000, so after a few years, maybe, the price of property can go up to, I don't know, six to 700,000. Okay, so the difference so is price appreciation. So appreciate ni, you said appreciate, we know the price is increasing. Okay, kalau depreciate, you belajar kan depreciation ya. So depreciate, harga di drop. Okay, kalau appreciate, the price goes up. Okay, so that's number one. The second type of uh, returns will be from dividend. Okay, kalau tadi tu just based not based on operation, but just based on uh, the price itself. So the price movement can be caused by uh, the performance of the company. Okay, it's about price of stock. Contoh kalau cerita pasal stock, eh, the price of stock doesn't relate directly with the performance. Memang ada sometimes may relate, but it's not the case every time. Ada je price of the stock can increase because of other reasons. Okay, because of hype, because of perception, dia boleh je naik, tanpa, you know, affected from uh, the performance of the company. Tapi for dividend payment, number two, usually it will relate with the performance of the company. The better the company performs in terms of their operations, so money dia punya profit tinggi, you know, the sales revenues going up. So obviously the higher the chance for you to get the dividend payment. Okay, so dividend payment ni come usually from the net profits. Okay, the profits of the company. So the higher the profits of the company, the higher the chance for you to get higher dividend payment. Okay, so this dividend payment, as I said, usually comes, ataupun the source of uh, payment ni comes from profit of the company. Okay, so usually the dividend in Malaysia lah, usually they will pay it uh, quarterly. Selalunya, quarterly. Let me share with you what we I Google them. Okay, so kalau in, in Malaysia, there's a lot of obviously online portals that you can look for. So I sometimes use the star and it's about, do we have a they have a business section kat sini. Just pergi je kat the star business section ni. Atau specifically dekat market eh. So here under this section you akan nampak ada news about dividends. Okay, so as investor, obviously we cite the price appreciation yang tengok ada goes up, ada changes yang tengok dengan harga, harga yang berubah ni, this will be from price appreciation, maknanya yang hijau ni sebenarnya price appreciate eh. Kalau yang merah ni dia depreciate. So, so that's the first one tadi. For the second types of returns, uh, you want to get from the dividends. Okay, these are the companies and ni dia punya dividend payment. Per unit basis. I tak sure you ingat ke tak. X date ni is the date of uh, the fine ataupun the day whereby will determine whether you entitled for dividend or not. So meaning in order to get this dividend, you kena invest ataupun you have to own the shares by this date. So kalau you jual before this date, you will not entitled for the uh, dividend. Okay. Meaning if you want to get the dividend, you have to buy ataupun purchase the stocks by this date. Ya awal ni. So ada so lot of things lah. Tengok lah. Rate dia macam ni 1 cent. Ada yang 5.42 cents per unit eh. Islam dah habis. Ok. 
Okay, yeah. So that's the second uh, types of income ataupun returns. As investor, this is what you want from the in the form of dividends. Okay, the form of dividends. And as I said, dividend comes from uh, net profit. Okay, because as a shareholder, okay, you are entitled uh, from the net profits. Okay, can be kalau ingat lah, we have revenues on top and then pay all the costs. Then you have the any before interest and taxes. You pay all the interest payments and then pay all the taxes. And then baru dapat net profit. And that net profit. Okay. Company will decide to give dividend. Okay, yeah, they will pay dividend to the shareholders, and the rest of the money they will put it in the retained earnings. Are you retained earnings? Okay, at reinvestment in the company. So this dividend, lah, okay, as shareholders, you are eyeing for this portion. Okay, from the net profit, katakanlah net profit dia 100 million ringgit. Okay, so there's a portion of this 100 million will be paid as net dividend. Okay, obviously not all 100, 100 million lah. Okay, a portion of this, 10%, 20%, I don't know, depending on the uh, company's policy, will be paid out as dividend. Okay, and this is what we want, dividend. Okay, that's number two lah, the expectation of returns. Uh, besides dividend, uh, other types of investment, they will pay in a form of interest for three yeah, interest income. So for stocks, memang based on dividend lah. or preferred stocks also in the form of dividend. But for interest, maybe example lah, maybe uh, it can come from uh, bond investment, pay bonds because bond don't pay dividend, they pay interest. Okay, similarly, uh, when we invest in this kind of uh, investment. Okay, untuk bond eh, they have price depreciation, boleh, terjadi. Okay, meaning the price, kalau you ingat last time, I'm not sure whether you're in my class or in another class, if you've taken uh, financial management before, we always assume that the price of bond will be at 1,000 ringgit. Okay, but this 1,000 ringgit can go up or go down depending on, again, market supply and demand. So if the price goes up, then the price depreciation, then we can get the returns by selling it at higher price. So, sama juga, lah, dia akan dapat price depreciation. Okay, tapi kalau you keep it until maturity, your income will come from this source, which is the interest. Okay, kalau bond, kalau ingat, the source of income is known as coupon. Coupon payment. Okay. So that's uh, another element that we try to, to achieve lah when we invest. Okay, depending on certain situation. And the last one, uh, this is maybe quite difficult to get, uh, but nowadays, uh, certain types tax benefits, certain tax benefits. Cuma nowadays, for for individuals, uh, for individuals, we don't have uh, certain tax benefits for a certain investment. Maybe uh, I can say for individuals, uh, uh, example, if you remember, you've, you've learned tax, can you learn tax? Ah, okay. Uh, for individual, I'm talking about individual. Eh? For companies, different stories. But companies, kadang-kadang, for certain industry, they have certain tax benefits. Okay. Tapi for individuals, uh, yeah, I can um, I can explain and discuss here when we talk about investment. We have one uh, type of investment which is okay. We have this one, private retirement skip. Own PRS in short. PRS. Eh? So for uh, individual, okay, young, especially working in private sector, lah, eh? in private sector, <coughs> kalau government, your when you retire later on, your source of income after retirement, you always hoping for the pension. Okay, but for private sectors employees, your number one source will come from EPF. KWSP. Okay. And this fund, which is from EPF or KWSP, usually will not be sufficient. Okay, not sufficient after retirement. Okay, you can 
spend this uh, money, your EPF funds, within five years pun dah boleh habis. Okay, sometimes even faster than five years. So therefore, that's why for private sectors, they, the government encourage you to uh, set up another fund. Okay, so that's why they kept come out dengan this scheme, private retirement scheme. So what kind of benefits that they get when you invest in PRS? You can get tax uh, tax relief. Okay, tax relief. You can get benefits in the form of tax relief. Cuma untuk PRS ni, apa? Kalau nak second 3,000, I tak sure kalau dia nak ada increase kan. Okay, 3,000 ringgit relief. So if you invest ataupun you put your money in this investment, sebab PRS ni, purpose for retirement just like EPF. So I, I'm not sure whether you're allowed to withdraw or not. I think ada some element you can withdraw. Tapi uh, they will give you returns obviously. Okay. But to encourage you more, so they bagi you benefits in the form of, okay, you, you put a certain amount of money in the accounts, uh, kita akan bagi tax relief to you. I, I tak payah explain detail lah what tax relief and I think you, you guys know what is tax relief. So dia akan reducekan your chargeable income. Okay, so from the income that you have, you akan tolak all the reliefs kan. So these reliefs, uh, after you deduct, you akan dapat the chargeable income. This chargeable income lah yang akan menentukan how much uh, tax you have to pay. So the more your reliefs, the less your chargeable income kan. So therefore, it will be beneficial for you if you have more reliefs. Okay, more release here meaning you take advantage lah, of this scheme, right? So these are the types of returns that ataupun benefits I can say uh, investors look at when they invest. Okay, and again it can be from individuals point of view yang kita explain ni kebanyakan individuals and also from business point of view. Obviously more or less the same. Okay, so that's the uh, recap lah, I guess that's a recap. So, you, you, everything I said just now is not new to you guys. So, uh, you have the investment in your course before. Okay, but in order to know portfolio, obviously you need to know about investment. Okay, so about portfolio ni is just a process, it's just a uh, steps in how to manage the investment yang kita discuss tadi. Okay, cuma tadi kita discuss investment per unit basis ataupun based on individual uh, investments. But when we talk about portfolio, obviously by definition here you can see investment portfolio is a set of securities ataupun a group of assets. Okay, you have 100,000, 100,000 ringgit. You will not invest all 100,000 ringgit in just one investment. Okay, you shouldn't do that. Okay, uh, and how to do, how to, to avoid that is by having a portfolio. Okay, portfolio tu macam like I said lah, it's a set of a group of securities or assets. And the reason why we, we do this, why we spread, why we, we, we diversify these uh, assets in two groups, in order to spread the risk. Okay, the main reason is this one here. Why we do portfolio? Because we want to spread the risk. Why we spread the risk? In order to, to minimize the risk. So just imagine if you have 100,000, you invest in one investment. So if, the, if that particular investment uh, reduce in values, obviously the whole investment that you have will reduce in values. Tapi kalau you split into five different assets, what katakan? So if it's only one yang drop, tapi we have other force yang maybe uh, goes higher in terms of return, so they can cover the one yang lost tadi. So that's the main reason why we have portfolio, okay? To minimize the risk, to spread the risk uh, among all the assets, okay? Cuma bila kita nak do the diversification, that's a process that you have to go through, okay? So this is where we learn about uh, the steps of portfolio management. So for portfolio management, you have to manage eh, manage the pool of funds okay. uh, with the purpose of investment, which is uh, consistent with investors' preference and the attitude towards risk. 
Okay, so these two elements, uh, the preference and the attitude to risk, is from investors' point of view. Okay, when we talk about portfolio management, you can think of from two sides. Okay, number one, you do your uh, the portfolio management for yourself. Okay, you as a portfolio manager of your own assets. Okay, but remember, you guys are possibly future financial planner. Okay, for clients and kind of. So you can also see portfolio management uh, whereby you manage other people's assets, okay, your clients' assets. Okay, so when we talk about investor, it can be yourself as investor or it can be from your clients, uh, preference and their attitude towards. Okay, so you can imagine ataupun bayangkan yourself like that. Okay, not only about your money, sometimes you have to manage other people's money. Okay, so bila kita manage other people's money, so kita tak boleh buat decision based on our preference. Okay, it's not your money pun. So you have to know the investor's preference. Mesti his customer akan ada their preference. And obviously, not everyone willing to take risk. Okay, not everyone willing to take risk. So that's why attitude to risk ni, very important. Okay, we can gauge customers' uh, attitude to, attitude to, towards risk ni by giving up a simple questionnaire, for example, to gauge ataupun to understand, okay, how this person punya attitude towards risk. Okay, selalunya attitude towards ni, sometimes we also can call them as risk appetite. Okay, macam appetite makan tu kan. So, risk appetite ni meaning how... Uh, how much risk someone willing to take okay, based on their risk appetite. Some maybe don't care at all about risk. Okay, They have a uh, major opportunity for investment with a possible or high return. Okay, they did not invest at it. And some people are very conservative. Uh, not every money they spend can remain intact. Okay, dapat profit sikit pun tak apa. Janji the, the money that the principal that they invest will remain intact. Uh, that kind of Attitude pun ada juga. So that's why for portfolio managers, you need to know their attitude towards risk because from there you can see which investment is suitable for them. Okay, so as a portfolio manager, obviously your your goal again to get to get returns. Okay, and this return usually must consistent with the risk. Okay, kita can cannot run from the risk element here. Lah. Okay, and as I said today, why we have to do portfolio, okay, the, the keyword is to minimize the risk due to the diversification, whereby we split our, our principal, our amount of investment to a smaller amount for every type of investment. And therefore, investors can invest in many types of investment because every investment will have a different degree of risk. Okay, are there certain, certain uh, types of investment? High risk, are there low risk? Okay, so maybe kalau you nak split eh, kita ada low risk, medium and high. Okay, kalau low risk, maybe FD for example, fixed deposit. Okay, kalau you invest in fixed deposit, it's low risk, tapi return dia low lah. Okay, kalau medium, medium lah. Kita letak kat sini, maybe bond any trust for example it's a medium risk kind of investment okay and kalau high risk in stocks okay. derivatives okay so these are high risk investments okay so when we talk about diversification as simple as this you can see already okay you not invest hundred thousand not letak dalam fd boleh Okay, tapi return low lah. Okay, tapi kalau dia ada objective to 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 earn something atau to to buy something in the future, so FD alone might not be sufficient. So you have to mix it. Okay, so another word that you can use, you have to mix the selection of assets. Not everything will be here. So I mean, some maybe portion you have to buy stocks, but you trust a bit, you know, so FD contohnya lah. So that is diversification. So why we diversify? Again, so that our assets will be spread. At the same time, the, the risk can be minimized. Okay. 
obviously there will be some uh, disadvantage lah when we when we do this diversification. There's a possibility that uh, one investment to drop too low in terms of the return, so they can pull down all the profits from other types of assets. But somehow, like I said lah, they can normalize, and the risk obviously usually will be minimized. So the portfolio management process involve uh, these four things. Ataupun these four things when relates back uh, to the steps. Okay, the step nanti I cerita kemudian. But these are the, among the things that you need to consider when we do the prof, uh, portfolio management process. The very first thing that, that we need to establish is to set up the objectives. Okay, so objectives siapa? The investor lah. We need to know what are their objectives. Okay, usually the objectives tu kita boleh split into three uh, terms. Like I said lah, short term, medium term, and even long term. Okay, we need to know what are their objectives. What they want to achieve in short term. Short term usually uh, maybe about less than one year, ataupun less than three years. Okay, medium term between three to five years. Okay, anything more than five years, uh, long term. Contoh. Right, so what they want to achieve short term, medium and long term. Okay, so once they know the objectives, then we can develop and implement the strategies. So when we when we talk about development of uh, and also implementing of strategies, this is where we need to do a lot of analysis. Okay, we, we need to know which type of investment is suitable, uh, which type of investment will be uh, beneficial and profitable to the investors. Okay, so a lot of analysis will, uh, needs to be done. In the second step, next number three, monitoring of markets and investors' condition. So, ni more on selection. Okay, selection of the investment. Okay, kita dah do analysis. Next, we decide which will be part of our portfolio. Okay, selection and obviously portfolio creation. We create the portfolio here in step number three, and lastly. Monitoring. Okay, monitoring of portfolio. So we have to monitor from time to time. If necessary, we may have to review and make the adjustment. So what kind of adjustment? We have five. Katakanlah, we have five investments. Okay, after one year, kita tengok. Okay, there's one asset ni not performing that good. Okay, because of whatever reason lah, it can be because of like say sekarang ni, let's say masa kita set up the portfolio in 2018, kita invest a lot in travel, travel industry contohnya, satu company ni yang relate dengan travel, Asia lah contoh. But tiba-tiba uh, 2019, sorry 2020, right, during the COVID-19 ni, uh, the tourism industry affected very bad because of the situation kan. So takkan kita nak maintain lagi this uh, stock dalam kita punya portfolio. So we need to remove it. Okay, we have to readjust, re -adjust, meaning we sell this uh, Asia contohnya and then we have to replace it with something else. Okay, so that is review and readjustment of portfolio. So we have to monitor from time to time and if necessary we have to adjust. Okay, so the process ni dia akan go back to any steps. Dia boleh go back to the third step maknanya kita uh, redo the selection ataupun kita reanalyze balik or even if necessary, again, you can ubah the objectives. Okay, so dia tak ada yang fix in portfolio management. Everything is changeable. Okay, everything is changeable and subject to change. Right. Okay, before we go into the process, ada soalan tak tanya? Baru slide number 8 ni. Any questions so far? Okay, if there's no question, maybe we take a very quick break, not quick, maybe five minutes break, and we will uh, resume. Okay, sekarang two five fifty five. We will resume back uh, this slide number eight ni uh, at three. Okay, I'll give you five minutes break, and kita can continue back in five minutes time.
Okay. okay. Let's continue with the most important part eh, when we talk about uh, portfolio management. Obviously, the most important part is about the process of how to set up on how to implement uh, the portfolio management. So here, as you can see, uh, there will be four steps. Okay, there will be four steps uh, for the process. Number one, step number one is to construct a policy statement. Okay, so this is the first important thing you need to do. You need to do. So policy statement is actually a document, uh, an agreement. Okay, agreement whereby in the policy statement, okay, obviously number number one, this policy statement must be written. Must be written. It cannot, it cannot be an oral statement. Eh? Bukan macam kita interview people and then they check up, they, okay, I want this and I want that. Ah, it must be written. Okay, obviously for many reasons lah why it must be written. Macam agreement, when we do agreement, must be written somewhere. Uh, agreed by both parties so that there will be no arguments in the future. So again, that's why policy statement is really important and obviously must be written. So that's why I always ask you to imagine yourself as the uh, portfolio managers of other people's money, not your own money. So uh, your own money, you don't have to have a written agreement, but it's your, your own money, right? But we, when we talk about uh, managing other people's money, so you need to make it written okay so what do you have in the policy statement okay so you need to specify the goals ataupun the objectives study and we said about objectives here the objectives can be short term medium and long term and obviously the acceptable acceptable risk levels okay uh, what kind of risk uh, the, the level of risk that they, that person willing to take Okay, yeah, kalau, kalau you tadi, I mentioned about the risk appetite ataupun yeah, about the risk, the risk appetite. Okay, however, this policy statement is not fixed. Okay, you should review periodically. Okay, let's say every every one year, maybe annually. You change ataupun you review whether to stick with the current one ataupun you need to make some adjustment. Okay, and this policy statement will be so-called the document for your own decisions as uh, portfolio managers, this will be your guide okay, for all your investment decisions. So you cannot go against the policy statement. So kalau policy, policy statement specify this individual is not high risk taker, janganlah pula you invest in high risk investment. Okay, so that will go against the policy statement. So you need to, to go by that policy statement. Okay, to give you some idea, okay, I'm not share with you one document. Okay, by the way, maybe I can introduce, I'm not sure you dah, dah pernah dengar ataupun you've been exposed to this kind of uh, things that you need to do. Eh? If you remember, I think you, you should remember lah. Kita ada six modules uh, for your RFP, eh, Registered Financial Planner, you have six modules. So, modules ada fundamental. Okay, fundamental to just, just the overview of the whole thing and then you have uh, risk management and insurance so the insurance planning uh, the investment planning that you've learned last semester insurance dah but last semester last time juga I, think, I can't remember the specific semester yang you want to be at risk the Insurance planning for last semester, semester four, semester four, bila? two semesters ago. Okay, so you have a and then investment, investment last semester, semester five. Then you have this semester, you have a lot. Lah. This semester, you have zakat and tax planning, you have uh, retirement, and you also have estate planning. So, all of those will be part of 
part of the module that you have to complete and in semester seven you have one important module yang module number tujuh lah the seventh module whereby you need to prepare the financial plan so in the financial plan among others you have investment punya planning juga and in investment planning obviously akan invest portfolio sebab you takkan invest everything in one investment kan so you need to do a portfolio of investment so I want to share with you this one financial plan reports okay whereby the thing yang cerita pasal objectives pasal uh, okay set up uh, the objectives uh, the rest of thing ni maybe you can learn some, somewhere else and not here lah eh? macam summary of the current situation semua yang takkan go through uh, we will look at the financial uh, sorry the risk profiling and we will look at the So about, you remember tadi cerita pasal risk kan, dia ada satu questionnya here that we can gauge uh, the customer's punya risk okay, ataupun dia punya attitude to, towards risk. Okay, ni tak dapat apa to share first. When we talk about uh, investment, sorry, uh, policy statement. So this is example of policy statement. Policy statement ni lebih kurang macam ni lah, dia punya executive summary eh. Yeah, ada dia punya goals and objectives, ada dia punya current situation and so the recommendation. So the goals and objective you can split into three macam saya cakap tadi lah. Okay, short term, medium and also long term. Okay, they specify here long is more than seven years. Okay, so for this example, dia punya short term goals, satu pun short term objectives here. Uh, among others, to have investment portfolio. So remember we are doing investment portfolio and eh? so dia nak portfolio with the Average return between 8 to 10%. So this is the objectives. So as a portfolio managers, kita dah tahu lah. Okay, dia punya objective is this much. So we need to ensure that our investment possibly to get this much. Okay, 8 to 10. So 8 to 10 ni, not so bad lah. Uh, meaning achievable. Okay, tapi kalau you invest everything dalam, for example, fixed deposit, you will not achieve 8 to 10%. So, but fixed deposit will give you around 3 to 4 percent only contohnya. So you need to invest somewhere higher, uh, higher returns punya investment. Okay, so tu yang relate dengan portfolio lah eh. Uh, ataupun investment. But the rest ni mungkin tak relate tapi you can see lah okay, dia, dia punya objective is to reduce tax payable. Okay, and also for child educations for example. Okay, so that's the objectives uh, short term. Okay, for medium for this particular family. They want to replace their cars. Okay, but not now. They not they not replace between three to seven years from now. Okay, so when we have this situation, we need to we need to think that we need to set aside a certain amount of money, lah, so they know after a few years they can look and do it for down payment. For this case, we let us thirty thousand. So meaning one car average fifteen thousand. Okay, and long term. They want to prepare for the retirement, okay, for the retirement with the expected uh, retirement income. So this actually, nanti ya, uh, the same you belajar retirement, kan? so you will learn how to calculate this for your retirement income. Okay, so again, I will not touch uh, besides investment. So dalam case ni, investment ni hanyalah nak create investment portfolio with the 8 and 10 percent returns. Okay, so this is an example of objectives, part of your uh, policy statement. Okay. okay, policy statement. So, they dah set up the goals. Okay, short term, medium and long term. Yeah, okay, the next one is three study. Eh? So, bear with me one second. I think I'm going to let that. Okay, by the way, this is the actual documents yang you all going to buat eh, next semester. This is the document that you need to prepare. Okay, nanti next semester, nanti you... Kau buatlah benda ni. See, yeah. Reliefs, kalau ikut macam tax. Talk about reliefs. Okay, when we talk about risk. Uh, ni. Okay, this is the risk profile. Okay, I always said tadi, we need to know the customer's punya risk appetite ataupun the level of acceptance to a risk. So, how to gauge atau how to know their level is by giving out a simple question. So, untuk financial plan ni dia ada question for that. Okay, dia ada six questions, eh? six simple questions. Okay, and every 
answer will have marks. Okay, so contohnya, what is your investment time horizon? So if you remember, I said tadi time horizon, investment time horizon means how long uh, your investment to available atau how how long your your money uh, available for investment to you can you know don't care about that money lah for that how for that apa for that period. Okay, so is it short term ada one year je? So because next year you need to do for something the car five years ataupun you can leave that money without thinking about withdrawing for 10 years okay then dia akan score lah kat sini okay when you hear unexpected ni baru hear eh bukan something happen yet eh when you hear unexpected adverse or bad financial news will you panic ke tak maknanya will you overreact never rarely ataupun always so kalau always dia akan score yang tinggi lah so ada six question kat sini. So from this question kita boleh score. So dalam kes ni dia dapat 14. So dia adalah dia punya profiling kat sini. So A 1 point, B 2 points and C is 3 points. So kalau semua C katakan, so ada six. Kalau semua C lah, dia jawab 18. So kalau 18 dia akan masuk dalam high risk investor. So maknanya you can invest this particular person's money in any high risk investment. Okay, tapi for this person, dia 14 eh. So, 14 is in middle. Okay, so dia medium risk. So, meaning you can spread lah. Some in low, low risk, maybe a bit in high risk. Tapi majority will be in the middle types of risk in investment. Okay, so this is how we gauge the risk level. Okay. So, that's your first uh, step lah eh, to construct a policy statement. So, dia akan ada detail dia kejap lagi eh. So, you go through the step first. Next, number two is to study the current financial economics uh, condition and forecast future trends. Okay, so for step number two ni, like I said tadi, eh, this is uh, analysis part. Okay, and when we talk about analysis, it's not actually about economic alone. Eh. It's not economic in the country alone. You, you need to study as well in the form of uh, industry. And also specific or company punya performance as well okay economic which is from macro level okay macroeconomic level from 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 the surface from the government punya point of view industry next level and lastly from the company's punya situation so this is where we need to study we need to analyze that's why i said for step number two is basically analysis analyze we need to analyze I have to analyze the uh, conditions and also possibly the future trends forecast. And when we have this analysis, they will determine which strategies will be suitable. Yeah. At the end of the day, whatever strategies you choose is basically to ensure this objective will be achieved. Okay, similarly macam tadi, you need to monitor and updating jugalah if necessary. Okay, so kalau kita go back to our syllabus, okay, for step number one, kita discuss this in topic one je. Okay, so from topic number two sampai lah almost ataupun the third last uh, topic, all about analysis. So analysis panjang eh, in our topics ataupun in our syllabus. Step number two ni kita learn from second topic, topic number dua. Sampai the third last topic. Okay, third last. Second last topic will be in step number three. The construction of the portfolio. Okay, the construction of the portfolio. So this is where we construct our portfolio and obviously we select uh, the best possible combination of assets. Okay, again with, with the intention to get uh, the best possible returns according to the policy statement that Okay, based on the investors when you risk and also in order to get ataupun to meet the investment goals. And lastly, we monitor and update accordingly. So this will be discussed in the final topic, topic yang last kali, which is how to evaluate the performance of our portfolio. So we have some measurements. Okay, so if some stocks underperform, we need to revise, we need to change the stocks ataupun we need to change the assets accordingly. Okay, and then we have to modify from, from time to time. 
Okay, so in 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 apa? In process flow, you can see lah, macam ni ya. Eh? Set up policy statements, uh, study, analyze the current and projections of the situations from economic point of view, from the industry point of view, and also from the company's point of view. Okay, and then after analysis, we decide ataupun we construct the portfolio. Okay, and lastly, kita monitor. Okay, and that's the, the sequence lah. Step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four. And dia boleh reverse. Okay, that's why dia panggil looping. Eh. So you reverse, you can go back to step three, you can go back to step two, ataupun you, in fact, you can go back to step one and change your policy statement. Okay, so there's no such thing as a fix punya uh, item kat sini. Everything is changeable as I said before. Okay. Ya, agak cerita dia. Okay. So why do we need policy statement? Ingat tadi ya, eh, policy statement is an agreement. Okay, this is an agreement. Between who? Between the investor and at the same time is the managers. Okay, the portfolio managers. So we have two parties kat sini. So why we need policy statement? Because to ensure that the investors punya needs is taken care. Okay, what kind of uh, needs, dia punya ni lah, dia punya objectives and possibly if there's any constraints. Okay, and dia punya objective tu obviously must be realistic. So, realistic means both parties can agree. Okay, example tadi lah, I bagi you example. Dia punya portfolio returns, dia nak average between 8 to 10% returns. And 8 to 10% returns is very much achievable. Okay, very much achievable. Jadi, you kena pandai fikirlah nak invest to which kind of investment. Okay. So, a lot of questions lah you boleh, boleh tanya kat sini. What are the, uh, the real risks? Okay, macam emotional reaction tadi, you can gauge this from the questionnaire. Okay, ingat tadi questionnaire ada up to 18 marks punya score tadi kan. So, you can gauge this kind of question from the questionnaire. Okay, in terms of their knowledge about investment, uh, the source of income, ni semua you boleh dapat dalam financial plan tadi eh. So, this is basically to understand the customers punya uh, background and also their behaviour, okay, behaviour towards their own money, right. So, why again we need a policy statement to set standards. Okay, remember for second and third steps when you do analysis, and then uh, the construction of portfolio. So those two steps can then refer balik to the policy statement. So that policy statement akan jadi standard lah. As a guideline. Remember I said guide. As a guide. Yeah. Guide for your selections. So from there, kita boleh, you know, compare lah the possible returns from the investment. And obviously, we can compare against uh, the benchmark portfolios. Okay, ni dalam policy statement tadi ada and other benefits of policy statement, among others, I tak nak cerita semua. Uh, they can reduce the possibility of inappropriate ni. Kalau from, kalau kita nampak tadi semua based on uh, disagreement kan. Tapi sometimes when we have this policy statement, this will ensure that the, the portfolio manager will do their works properly. Dia tak akan mismanage our money. Dia akan elakkan all those unethic, unethical behaviour. Okay. Maksudnya dia nak siphon our money ke dia nak, you know, nak kasih lah, misappropriate the funds for something else ke. Okay, so that's one thing. Sebab dia nak specify everything kat situ. Uh, nak kasih lah, can resolve any potential disagreement. Tak boleh nak agree, uh, kalau tak boleh nak, nak, you know, nak argue on certain things sebab everything is written between the client and the portfolio managers. So, kalau portfolio managers dah decide according to the policy statement. So, this client cannot argue lah, ataupun cannot blame. Okay, cannot blame the portfolio managers for any decisions. Okay, sebab dia dah return like that. And sometimes, the client mungkin tak puas hati. Okay, uh, that's not satisf uh, satisfied with the current portfolio managers. They will change to other, other portfolio managers. So, if they have a policy statement, they will bawa je that portfolio statement to another uh, portfolio managers and that will become 
easy transition. Okay, so they not change from one portfolio manager to another, it will be smooth, smooth transaction ataupun smooth transition between one to another without any delays. Okay, tak perlu lah set up everything from the scratch. Okay, sebab you dah ada your, your apa baseline ataupun your basis. Okay, so how to create ataupun how to construct the policy statement. Saya cakap tadi lah, saya dah tunjuk pun the documents. You can construct by using the template yang akan mention about uh, the objectives. Okay, and also ni yeah, objectives and also possible constraints kalau ada. And here they will specify lah kalau macam tadi, the example yang tadi, the return they specify 8 to 10%. Yeah. So, they specify kat situ. The risk, you can get again from the questionnaire. And the constraint. Okay, constraint maybe kita kurang cerita tadi. So, the type of constraints okay, can be gauged from this situation. Liquidity, time horizon. So, time horizon pun kalau you present, tadi ada dalam question ni. Eh. They, they ask about time horizon. How long you want to invest atau how long you have your money for investment. Uh, the tax factor. Okay, some individual may have uh, certain element about tax. Especially for those with high income. Kalau you again ingat tax, Malaysian tax kan very progressive eh. So the higher your income, uh, the higher chargeable income, the higher your tax bracket. Okay, the tax bracket. So for a certain types of investment akan menyebabkan your income to increase. So when your income increase, goes to another bracket. So you have to, you have to pay more tax, for example. So this tax factor have to be take into account juga. Okay, take into account uh, importance. Sebab ada certain investment yang macam tadi lah kalau ingat the returns eh. Kita ada uh, price appreciation, dividends. Okay. Some investor does not want dividend. Dia nak price appreciation ni sebab bagi dia orang kalau dia orang dapat dividend, they have to pay with more tax for, for certain people. Okay, so this uh, situations needs to be discussed jugalah as the constraints. Okay, legal and so on lah. Okay, preferences as well. Okay. Ada soalan ke ni? Ada lagi ke tak ni kan? Saya cakap seorang. Okay, for, for the first topic ni memang everything is all about theory lah. Eh. Sorry to say lah. Eh. Tak ada calculation pun involved. But you need to understand the process. Uh, the reason ataupun the, the, yeah, the reason behind all of this. Because dia akan... Go back later on lah with regards to the steps. The most important part is the four steps tadi. So, objective as I said tadi eh, uh, includes, I'm oh, sorry, this is risk objectives. Okay, risk objectives. So, everyone will have different level of risk. Okay, selalunya dia akan associate dengan age juga. Okay, age and also income. So, usually the younger generations uh, are more willing to take risk as compared to the older generations. So, again, uh, memang it's, it's norms, good, normal, kan? Uh, the younger ones willing to take the risk because they, they want to achieve more because there's a long way to go, kan? Tapi kalau yang dah older generations, they have everything, why, why bother to take more risk? So, might as well uh invest in something yang short term and get returns immediately for example so the risk objective depends on the clients juga lah so again analysis needs to be done okay kat mana nak buat macam mana nak buat again the question eh so kalau tadi risk objectives for return objectives they have to specify what kind of return they want okay macam mana kita eh in terms of the capital appreciation ada yang for risk averse punya uh, clients, they want they have uh, they want their capital to be preserved. And this is especially for low risk taker lah. For low risk taker, they tak nak capital they gone. They want they want to make sure that their their capital tu to be preserved. Okay, capital position, the cerita, the current income is more on uh, immediate returns. Okay, this is in the form of dividend, for example. And total return is combination of all. Okay, combination of all. Okay, they have to specify this. Risk punya objectives. Uh, and also the return objectives. Okay, and uh, the constraints. 
Okay, these are some examples of constraints. Okay, must be stated juga dalam policy. Selain daripada objectives that they want to achieve, they need to specify what needs to be avoided. Okay, what needs to be avoided. For example, requirement for liquidity. So if you remember tadi, dalam like example tadi eh. Bear with me one second eh. Dekat objective, walaupun dia tulis kat objective tadi eh. Okay, they are specify about the down payment of 30,000. So this is an uh, example of constraints. Okay, the liquidity constraint meaning in three to seven years time, this person needs 30,000 for down payment of cars. Okay, so this is liquidity needs. Okay, it's part of this down payment. All right, so uh, meaning as uh, portfolio managers, you need to know uh, your investment tu akan ada certain investment yang liquid. Meaning if that person wants to sell the investment, the investment available. So meaning, meaning don't invest everything yang non-liquid. Okay, so that, so that nanti akan ada problems lah. But we know in middle term, this person needs to withdraw a certain amount of money. So you have to plan juga lah. Don't invest everything in long term saja. So you need to invest something yang boleh withdraw after between two lah, three to seven years so that they have the money for the down payment. Okay, so these are the constraints that need to specify. Jangan tak tulis kalau tak nanti the portfolio managers invest in somewhere yang non-liquid and so then a problem to withdraw. Okay. Again, top time horizon as I mentioned earlier. Eh? And then tax, as I said lah, some individuals prefer uh, the income too, not in the form of dividend, but in the form of uh, the form of price appreciation. But price, price appreciation hanya akan dapat when you sell. Okay, this this part the unrealized capital gain. So un, when we said unrealized, meaning on paper you nampak your your. Like I give example there, from one ringgit to one fifty, from hundred thousand worth of shares to hundred fifty thousand. Okay, that hundred fifty thousand. Yes, it's yours. Tapi you will not get the 50,000 unless you sell. Okay, itu kita panggil dia unrealized. Sebab you tak jual lagi. Tapi kalau dividend, automatically dia akan masuk your account. Okay, so for those with high income, okay, obviously dia akan ada concerns with regards to the tax. Sebab dia punya income akan increase and they, they have to pay more tax. Okay, so for this kind of, you know, investor, okay, obviously they will try to go for types of investment yang uh, ataupun to, to the types of stocks kalau kita pasal stocks specifically yeah, uh, who will not pay a lot of dividends but ada certain types of companies yang memang akan bayar dividend yang rendah you will pay less dividend especially for uh, companies with uh, high potential and just started up their, their business meaning new companies lah basically when they are new companies they tend to pay low low dividends because they need their their profits too for their for their growth. Okay, tapi for our company and establish, they will pay they will pay a lot of dividends because there's no room for you know growth anymore. So the money, the profits, they can pay back to the shareholders. So this type of share maybe tak applicable ataupun tak uh, attractive enough for this kind of investor. So it again, depends on customers right so you have to bear in mind the tax concerns as well and lastly there are individuals uh, unique needs and preferences but some some other some uh, investor may have their own preference and needs as simple as okay maybe from from muslims point of view eh, they punya needs and preference they not their investment to be shark and compliant contohnya. so that's is part of this lah uh, their preference and needs. So some personal preferences that need to be socially conscious investment could influence investment choice. Okay, ada yang tak nak invest in something yang go against uh, the nature. Against the nature pula. Maksudnya, uh, company yang 
Maksudnya dia nak invest in green companies ya. Dia tak nak company yang mungkin merosakkan alam sekitar contohnya. So that's all based on needs and preference. So company yang terlibat dengan manufacturing, perkilangan dia tak nak invest contohnya. Dia nak just company yang uh, consider as a green company contohnya. So that's all based on needs and preference. So dia akan masuk dalam uh, constraint lah. So maknanya you can avoid. When we talk about constraints, all of this you can avoid. And also take notes. Okay, because this will affect your decision later on. So when we talk about investor, we go back to investor. Uh, we have what we call as individual uh, life cycle. Okay, I uh, go straight to these uh, phases of life cycle. Eh? Uh, according to this Riley and Brown. Okay, in general, you can see here the the cycle of the investor macam you guys uh, katakanlah first graduate nanti first bila you dah graduate you kerja let's say umur you berapa eh? let's say 23 katakanlah I'm not sure umur berapa ni let's say your first job nanti when you are in 23 years old and in Malaysia on average uh, our retirement age will be at 60 kat sini 60 Okay, and our life expectancy, mungkin tak sampai 85 eh. In Malaysia, our life expectancy, okay, dalam account, sorry, dalam plan tu. Tadi dia ada mention tau. Macam ni lah. Oh, lawan puluh. Dalam kes ni dia letak, the life expectancy 80 years old. Okay, mungkin too high lah for certain relations eh. Tapi dia accept kat sini. Dalam kes ni dia letak 85. But anyway, katakanlah kita ikut dia. Dia kata life expectancy 80. Okay, life, life expectancy faham eh. Uh, jangka hayat. So meaning people are expected to live up until 80 years old. Okay, so maknanya lepas ni bonus lah. Contohnya. So after this 85 ni maybe in more developed countries, dia punya life expectancy will be more lah. I don't think so kita sampai 80 macam sebenarnya but for the sake of this uh, illustration, I letak 80. Okay, you are starting here, 23 years old. Baru graduate and got your first job. Okay, so as investor, you have to put in your mind already. Okay, selalunya for short term basis, the very first thing instead of house, selalunya you can go for this one. You go for car. Siapa yang tak ada kereta lagi, that's the time. Okay, I got the first job, I need a car for example ataupun motorcycle maybe okay that's your goal number one for short term basis okay house selalunya for our case in Malaysia mungkin other countries maybe cheaper to buy house but in Malaysia cost to purchase a house is very expensive so maybe it's not suitable in short term selalunya ni medium or in fact sometimes boleh naik ke long term juga okay, for house yeah but here you can see the first item on the long term, they put retirement. Okay, you baru sekerja kat sini. But they put long term as retirement, yes. You pun dah belajar starting to to apa, to go to the retirement planning ni class kan. Retirement, you need to plan from the first day you start your job. Okay, not masa umur you 50, not here. Baru nak fikir pasal retirement. Retirement, you need to start early. Okay, as I said tadi, for private sectors, your your source of income when you retire comes from EPF number one. Okay, so that's why, uh, as I said tadi, in fact, at the tax benefit juga kat situ, you need to set up additional funds, APRS for example, and others possible. Okay, others ni can be lah, unit trust, in stocks, anything lah yang can give you income in the future. Okay, why EPF alone is not enough? Okay, because based on statistics, okay, are the study uh, done by certain institution eh, based on study ataupun based on statistics, if you rely on EPF alone, okay, EPF alone, you will end up spending your money until zero within five years after retirement. So imagine kalau you retire kat sini 60. So by 65, your money will be gone. 
from your EPF. So kalau your life expectancy sampai 80 ni, okay, so the, the gap daripada umur 65 sampai 80 ni, how to survive? Okay, so that's why you need to set up more other PRS, other, other type of investment that will generate income until you reach 80 years old. And then after 80 years old, you don't care anymore. So what you're, you expect your to live until 80 years old. Okay. So that's why retirement very important for this reason. Lah. Okay. And here, they dah, they dah mention juga uh, the long-term requirement ataupun the long-term uh, objective includes the children's college ataupun university ataupun study punya or education punya finance, uh, bukan financing, education punya funds. Okay. You can think from here ataupun later on, it all depends to, on you lah. Okay, and this phase from 23, you start working until 35, 36, like that. This is what we call as accumulation phase. This is where we try to generate return as much as possible. Okay, kita nak me, mengaut uh, keuntungan to accumulate wealth, kekayaan as much as possible. Okay, tapi bukan tamak eh, but uh, obviously uh, within the means lah, within the means. Okay, so once you dah reach your 30s, 40s, maybe 50s, okay, and then they can peak at a certain point, okay, bila tengah-tengah ni, the consolidation phase, this is where your short term requirement dah berubah. You don't care about house and car anymore because you dah own. Okay, unless you want to change lah kat sini. Tapi your short term now, yang tadi long term about children punya college needs, terjadi your short term sebab your, you married already, your kids dah besar, then yeah, you have to think about your uh, children's punya education needs. Okay, still retirement will be in your mind as well. So once you pick dekat umur retirement ni, 60, then kita masuk dalam the, the third phase, which is spending and gifting. So this is where you learn about uh, estate planning. Okay, perasan ada estate planning eh. So this is where you can set up your will, wasiat. Okay, so that you know where your, your wealth will be distributed later on. Okay, so this is the whole structure, the whole process of investor. Okay, individual. From the day they start working until the day they retire, and until the day they die, lah, basically. Okay, yeah. And lastly, okay, maybe last section lah, like, actually, for today is when we talk about portfolio management. The process in diversification study is actually the process of allocating the assets. Okay, the process to decide where your money will be invested in. Okay, so the, the distribution of wealth okay, will be different from one country to another. Okay, based on the asset classes. Okay, I just cheated again. Some investment will be low risk. Kalau you perasan tadi, actually, kalau low risk investment, macam fixed deposits. Kalau medium, macam bonds. Macam inilah. So, kalau, sorry. When we talk about asset classes, ataupun the types of assets, common stocks. A common stock ni will be high risk. Bonds will be medium risk. Contohnya, foreign securities uh, will be high risk. Short term securities will be medium risk. Okay, kalau low risk, you boleh bagi tadi lah, FD, fixed deposits, savings account. Okay, so these are the types of uh, asset classes. Okay, asset classes. So with these asset allocations, okay, the techniques to balance between one asset to another two very important. Okay, very important. So as a portfolio managers, you don't care at you just you don't just focus on the composition of equity or debt saja. Okay, but you need to ensure that the mix too includes the categories as well. Okay, I just give you an example kat sini lah. Eh. I nak, nak summarize kan je when we talk about asset allocation. It's not about, example, eh, I put here equity, stocks, 
on uh, uh, money market if you remember uh, money market so if you have 100,000 as example selalu yang bagi tadi 100,000 you just don't divide this according to the categories saja the composition only you need to take into consideration dalam equity or stocks ni dia ada pecahan lagi Okay, for stocks, for example, they are the, if you remember, lah, we have blue chip stocks. Blue chip stocks. We have growth stocks. We have income stocks. Okay, so this composition point important as well. Okay, not only about debt and equity. Sorry, equity and debt kat sini. But the composition of each element you need to know. So bond, they are the government bond. Contohnya. They have private bond. Kita letak dia, private debt securities okay. For money market, kita ada Malaysian government securities, MGS Kita okay, ada pecah-pecah dia So, when we do asset allocation It's not about this first layer je In fact, we need to go to the second layer as well okay, In order to have a appropriate mix of categories okay. Itu je lah kot, theory summary When we talk about asset allocations okay. So, just to summarize Asset allocation and cultural differences will play a role juga lah. So here you can see kalau pension funds in the US, uh, which is kalau kat Malaysia equivalent to uh, EPF lah, kalau kat Malaysia EPF tadi, majority of the funds, ataupun 58% of the funds, they can invest in equity. Okay, remember equity to stocks. And this equity is high risk. So 50% will be invested in uh, high risk investment. Okay, but if you compare with another high income countries in the UK, for example, they invest in 78% lagi tinggi. Okay, and in contrast, in German, semua ni dekat uh, in the West world lah, kalau Japan ni maybe in the East kan, tapi kalau West, you have US, UK and German. In German, very conservative. Okay, very conservative. They just invest 8% je of the total funds in the <coughs> uh, equity market. So therefore, asset allocations, ni pecahan kat sini tadi, <coughs> culturally, it will somehow uh, affect lah. Okay, so here in Malaysia, our EPF usually, they can invest around 10 to 20% lah. 10 to 20% in the equity. So maknanya very conservative juga. Because we don't want to expose a lot macam 78% in the UK ni sebab stock market like I said eh, dia boleh up and down very quickly eh. so you are end up akan uh, lose a lot of money if the investment yang you pilih tu salah okay so dia adalah teknik dia I don't want to talk about this you can read nanti lah eh. the integrated strategy the strategic asset allocation the tactical and the insurance okay dia ada you baca yang underline ni je, the difference between one to another eh. Okay, and this one I will skip for now. Okay, kita akan discuss this back dalam topic, <coughs> topic number, berapa, number eight kalau tak salah. We have, uh, when we talk about uh, KPM, capital asset pricing model and also ABT, arbitrage uh, pricing theory. Kita akan discuss balik pasal Markovitz and Sharp ni. These two individuals, they're number one, eh? Mark Levitz and Sharp, these individuals <coughs> uh, who created the theory of economics related to portfolio. Okay, so they can add some, we call them as uh, assumptions. You can read it enough, assumptions related to <coughs> investor. When we do theory, when you learn economics from before this, when we want to uh, we want to simulate certain certain uh, analysis at when we want to forecast certain things kita kena assume certain elements to be for example every investor should be the same kita tak boleh kata dia orang berbeza so or else nanti kita punya kita punya estimation will be wrong so you can you can read until lah dia punya uh, assumptions eh? they have the similar similar traits similar characteristic dia punya time horizon will be the same time horizon Okay, but don't worry about this. I will go back to this when we go discuss about capital asset pricing model.
Okay, so kat sini pun sebenarnya dah hujan akan Ya, yeah, you pun tak cakap apa but Ya, yeah, it, it somehow affects me eh, kat belakang ni So with that, I end the first topic So like I said, it's all about theory And next week Okay, next week we will discuss uh, The topics of <coughs> Risk and return Okay, the Risk and return elements for uh, Single security So kalau sempat, I can go through to Topic 3 juga, which is uh, The risk and return for the portfolio Okay, so I'll open the floor for other questions. So, anything you want to ask, you can ask now. I'm, I'm most of, uh, I, I'm talking most of the time in English. Very, very seldom I, 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 I use the terms uh, in Malay. But anyway, uh, yeah, ASB is one of the example of any trust. So, but again, you cannot put all the money in ASB alone. Okay, even though in ASB, okay, they have they diversify for you already. Okay, but uh, you need to put uh, your money in different types of investment because if you put in, in ASB, for example, the return maybe will give you around five to six percent. Okay, for for the previous year, the return will. The return is about five percent only. So if you go back to the you know the policy statement from the the client just now, just like I shared just now, did not eight to ten percent, right? So if you put everything in ASB, obviously it will not be enough. Why hate investment? Uh, I need to check uh the the profile because I think it's. It's quite similar like risk. I'm not sure whether you have you heard about risk or not. Whereby they invest your your spare spare money or your your change of money, right? So it's quite similar like unit trust, like risk. Have you heard risk? R A I Z. Maybe I can type it here. Like this, yeah. Uh, risk and this risk. Uh, what they do? Uh, they will. We will invest in small amount of money, and where they invest, they will invest in unit trust. Yes, like uh, in for risk, they tie up with uh, ASMB. Okay, ASMB. So ASMB, they have a lot of funds, and obviously they will not go for ASB lah. They will go for the equity based kind of investment and so on. So I think Wahid investment is more or less like risk, if I'm not mistaken, eh? So the investment itself, uh. It's more like a robo advisor. I'm not sure whether you've heard about this. Yeah. Saya nak tanya kalau macam investment dekat uh, public gold tu, public gold public. investment dalam emas. Uh -huh. In gold itself. Yeah, obviously gold is one of the investment. If you remember, I said earlier we have financial assets, we have uh, real assets. Okay. So gold is part of real assets. And the benefits of gold investment, they will go against, because gold is one of investment is considered as defensive investment. So defensive, it means when everything goes down, usually the gold will go, go up in terms of the price. Okay, so the inverse, inverse relationship. Eh? So meaning when you see the price of gold increase, it shows that our economy is not doing well. Okay, our economy is not doing well. So when the economy is not doing well, so certain investment will drop. Okay, stocks will drop. Contohnya. Okay, so obviously it's, it's good to have gold as part of your portfolio juga. Okay, about the return again for gold, you don't have dividend lah. Your 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 investment on gold is purely based on price appreciation. Okay, the price appreciation. Uh, I, uh, if you ask me, yes, you can invest. Huh? Okay. Anything else? Yeah, you have to find a real client, so-called real client uh, in the future. For for your module seven, eh? For your module seven, you have to prepare the financial plan. Yeah, I showed you just now, whereby you have to consult a potential client, and the potential client usually, for module seven, I just let you know. Uh, now, like 
for module seven, um, uh, you have two parts. The first part is the exam. You have to do the exam, written exam. And the second part is about the financial plan reports that I showed you just now. Okay, so for the report, okay, you need to find a family, okay, husband and wife, married couple, with at least one kid, one children, one children, one child. Okay, to ensure you have all the elements of planning, okay, for retirement, for the parents, husband and wife, for planning, for education, uh, for estate planning, so for everything, for tax planning. So that's why, um, yeah, you need to do that next semester. So yang tadi I share tu is just a heads up. Okay, since you are doing RFP, eh, RFP, Registered Financial Planner, last time for my, during my time eh, I, when I went for the class, uh, since you are doing registered, not Shariah, Registered Financial Planner, you are doing Registered Financial Planner. So there's one element whereby you need to do, uh, they, they call it the final, I remember the final expenses. So you need to take into account their final expenses and so on. So uh, usually they will ask us to find non-Muslim family. But I'm not sure nanti next semester you need to check lah whether still applies or not. Right. All right, anything else? All right, so I think uh, that's about it for today. So like I said, we will continue with topic number two and possibly topic three next week, same time. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, I will share the video, last week's video I shared already. So just check your my guru for any news, any updates uh, with regards to the videos and also for the notes as well. All right, so thank you very much and I'll see you guys next week. Sir. Right. Sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir.